Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the podcast. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're trying to grow our channel and as we continue on with the podcast, we want to start new forms of content. We want to start posting our work here on YouTube. So if you want to see some of that and continue supporting the podcast, please subscribe. Enjoy the episode. Hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Exordia Creative Podcast. Hope you had a great holiday season. Hope you're bringing in the new year with some positivity and having a good time. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, dude. Feels like it's been a while since our last podcast. Feels like six weeks. We did, we did take a week off. We yeah, did. it feels like six. Yeah. Yeah. And we had that weird period in between Christmas and New Year's where it's like, mm-hmm. what day is it? I feel like it's the gooch of the year. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we we use it uh, somewhat productively. We had our meeting. Are you uh, meeting? Yeah. Uh, wrap up. Um how we thought we did with some of our goals for 2020, kind of take inventory, yeah. set some more for 2021, which yeah. is definitely an ongoing process. But I did think of one thing that we really dropped the ball on this year. What's that? You want me to say it? Sure. The sweaters. Yeah, we did. We dropped the ball on that, guys. Yep. And we apologize. Um, we definitely still want to do some kind of merch clothing. I think this process was a little too complicated. I don't know exactly because I wasn't on like the back end side of things. I don't know exactly what the process looked like, but um, yeah, we kind of we kind of dropped the ball on the merch. So that's something that we're we're going to change for uh, this coming year. So be on the lookout for that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's valid. Yeah. Um, a, a few factors. We uh, were very particular with um, who we wanted to source the blanks from being mm-hmm. the, the hoodies themselves. Yeah. And. We ended up working with a small uh, company here in Ontario, and unfortunately, they were hit pretty hard by COVID, and for better or worse, that does uh, slow down the supply chain, and it was, you know, like a serious temptation for us to consider working with a different company. Yeah. Um, However, you know, this company uh, ticked every other box that we wanted, and also, like, as a small business owner myself, I think you can empathize with... um, with, with with how difficult uh you know things like that can be right now and i look to some of the companies that i work for um uh who chose to continue working with us like even though they were going through a difficult time as well yeah. so it felt only right to to try to not hold that against them 100 percent, and like we're, we're gonna give it another rip this year yeah and uh, basically the the friends and family got theirs yeah. Um, yeah. and we're slowly collecting our, our list for the next order. Yeah. So you should be hearing from us soon if you did express so do you interest. Think we still have time for the hoodies. And like, wanting them. Be- I guess it's just the beginning of winter technically. Yeah. Like we're really not in the cold months yet. So I think that if we can get it going in the next couple months, we'll, we'll be okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I like, I, yeah, I guess you rock hoodies all year though. I, I just love them. Yeah. You know, I wear them all the time. Yeah. What about you? Do you wear them in the summer? Sometimes if it's like a cooler, if it's like a cool, it's always at day, night. It's always I, at home. I like rocking the hoodie with the shorts. Yeah. That's a nice one for, for me. For sure. You're not a big shorts guy, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. So anyway, yeah, I, uh, we had a great last year as, as far as our business goes. So thank you for all the support. Um, I know it was a challenging year and there was, there was challenges for us as well, but I think overall we really, we really, um, conquered the challenges and yeah came to and we're really excited for this year a lot of new opportunities a lot of new things going on yeah if you want to look back maybe two or three episodes ago we did kind of a deep dive on uh what covid was like for us and yeah. how we kind of faced those challenges yeah. and we also um talk about our first year in business and yeah give some advice and some stuff that we learned too mm-hmm. so if you're interested we have like a pretty thorough episode on that yeah yeah and one one podcast resolution i'm gonna do uh this year I'm no longer going to be cracking the bubbly upon opening the podcast. Really? We got some negative, I did not notice. We got some negative feedback okay. um, over the holidays. You know who you are. And uh, I'm just not going to do it anymore. And I'm actually not even going to talk about bubbly that much unless bubbly wants to reach out. So yeah, it's going to be here. I'm not going to stop drinking it, but it's not going to be like the cracking of the bubbly. That's valid. There was also rumors. Bubbly works for you. You don't work for bubbly. Exactly. There was also some, some thing people were saying that I was... Uh, that there's another podcaster that also cracks a beer before it opens. And that's where I got it from. Oh, really? There was some hunting guy. I don't, I'm not into hunting. Um, I don't watch hunting content, so I didn't However, steal it. I just, I just started, uh, Oh, I do rep cabin Creek. <laughs> Shout out to cabin Creek. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just started doing it, but we're going to stop. 
we're gonna yeah. stop. I don't know. I, I guess, thought it was like a unique touch. But, but for audio listeners, I guess you've got your headphones in, and then we open up the podcast. Is it too loud? Like, I don't know what it is, but I'm just mm. not gonna do it anymore. Fair so. enough. It is what it is. Um, there's some construction going on in the building. We should actually talk about the building. So I've been popping in and out, answering emails and stuff in the office over the holidays and uh, collecting Amazon packages, blah, 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 blah. And there's been a lot of movement going on in yeah. the office. Um, we had quite a few people move out mm-hmm. from our floor, um, some new people moving in. And so that's been interesting, watching everybody move in and out. And we're moving next next month. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're moving across the hallway over there. So we're going to be changing up the podcast set a little bit. Um I don't know what I think about office space in 2021 about like people having office space and is office space going to be declining or are we going to see like the decline and it's going to come back or yeah. I'd love to know what you think about that. Cause I think that, you know, for me and I feel like a lot of other people, uh, extroverts, I am a little introverted, but extroverts, we really vibe off of other people's energy yep, and stuff. Definitely. And so, well, I think that there's a lot of people saying, yeah, working from home is great. I just wonder like long term. I know a lot of people have been suffering from work-life balance because they're working from Definitely. home. So I wonder where the office space stuff is going to go. Is it going to trend this way, that way? So Yeah, I think as early as, you know, the initial lockdown announcement in March 2020, we started to see that trend of uh, occupancy rates and corporate real estate going down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's super situational. It's different in every country, every region. Um, for example... Um, we started to see a lot of people go back to work in like the early to mid summer months, Mm -hmm. at least where we're at in Ontario and people were slowly trickling back into the office. Um, and then of course we're just hit with a second lockdown. Um, and we're at kind of like a sobering, uh, day and time right now because we're filming this on Monday the 4th. So this is like the first official business day of the year. I think to a lot of people, maybe the fact that we're really in a lockdown here in Ontario is just kind of setting in because we were kind of in like, like you said, that weird period, you know, between Christmas and Boxing Day, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And this is kind of like day one, feet back on the ground and things are, are setting in. At least, at, least, at least for me, I'm kind of coming to terms with the fact that this is another uh, lockdown and yeah. Uh, perhaps it'll be to the end of the month, perhaps longer. Yeah. We really don't know. It definitely feels like it. It's, it's a lot quieter out on the streets again. I'm noticing. Yeah. Um, my parents are taking this lockdown pretty seriously. Like they took the first one. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's an interesting topic that you bring up the, the office space stuff. Like, yeah. like where is this all trending towards? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I totally, empathize with like the need for work-life balance and it's nice to have a, a dedicated physical space yes, yes. but i think maybe not it went away you jinxed it <laughs> i always do that but i think um you know this is going to be a real test and i think it's really going to make it's really going to beg the question of how bad do i need the office space mm-hmm. you know because if things are tight for your business financially and this is something that you could live without and the only sacrifice you have to make is like a little bit of work-life balance. Not not to underestimate how important that is, um, but I feel like this is really uh, going to make people second guess if they need the space or not. Yeah. And for some industries, it's a no-brainer. Of course, you need a space. Yeah. But I think we're seeing a lot of people, uh, a lot of people uh, reevaluate their relationship with their office. Yeah. yeah. At least for small businesses, anyway. Yeah. But, but but on that note, I like I never understood the appeal of um, renting or moving out or moving in on January 1st. Like that seems like the worst time to do it. I understand it's the start of a calendar year. Yeah. But like us or like you personally, for example, like isn't February 1st just such a better time? That's just kind of when it lined up. Yeah. Like for the house there. And or any it, other month you, that's not New Year's Day. You yeah. Know? But even February sucks because like it's wet. I prefer to move in like the summer. Yeah, or the very fall, true. You know, when it's a little drier. Very out. true. Um, so I'm not looking forward to the yeah. to the wetness. Of I don't the know. Summer. You don't want your house like half packed up on Christmas. Yeah. But a lot, a lot of people move. And a lot like, of people do move. I guess this is like a, a corporate uh, building here. So it's a little bit different. But yeah, a lot of people in and out. Yeah. And we should say that like not that this building specifically is a, is a trendsetter by any means. But as the offices have been emptied, people are coming right back in. Because I know uh, like, for example, when they move out the Blair bros, they have it filled right back up right, like right away. 
Um, and I remember back when we wanted a space in here that there was a wait list even. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I think, I you know, supply and demand because if they need to get their occupancy up and things stay empty for a little long, then they're going to be more lenient and more flexible on yeah. what kind of prices they're willing to accept for the rent. Yeah. Yeah. What a crazy time. Um, yeah. Long term, been- I think it'll be interesting. I yeah. think this has definitely accelerated our trend toward like, digital collaboration and stuff Mm -hmm. like um you know uh number one app of the year for uh iphone and ipad was zoom yeah which is really a sign of the times had a few zoom christmases yeah definitely yep it's interesting as a as a technologist and as somebody who loves the future and looking forward to stuff um i'm very fascinated by it Mm -hmm. by like how rapidly we see these 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 uh these trends scale in just a matter of months, what, you know, some projections say would have taken years to happen. Yeah. It's accelerated a lot of things and mm-hmm. slowed a lot of things down. Yeah, for sure. So finance minister of Ontario decided to head down to the Caribbean. Did yeah, you hear about this? I did hear about that. First and foremost, what a man, move. <laughs> shout out to Bill Morneau, uh, former uh, Trudeau government uh, finance minister. One of the best to ever do it. Okay, he brought in the TFSA, one of the best uh, registered financial accounts ever. Um, We're so privileged as Canadians to even have access to a financial vehicle like a TFSA. So he's a boss for that. And he phased out the penny. Yeah. Like, (laughs) mic drop, man. One of the best to ever do it. Yeah. Anyway, hard to live up to that. Yeah. So I just had to go on a little trip. Yeah. How'd you hear about that? I'm sure it was all over the news. It was was all over the news. And how was it made public? I should say. Just friends of friends of friends, and probably that's how it happened. Yeah, I mean the only the only little bit of defense that he might have is that he went on the fourteenth of December. We weren't in the lockdown, so he left on the fourteenth. He was away for two weeks. Dougie called him, said, "Hey, where are you at?" He's like, "I'm out of the country." He's like, "Okay," and so Doug was like, "Man, I probably should have told him to get his ass back here," but he didn't. And then so he came back. Him and Doug met. He actually gave a little press conference in the uh, airport. He met with Doug, and I'm assuming Doug was like, hey, dude, you have to resign. Because if they didn't do that or Doug didn't fire him or there wasn't some crazy, um, not crazy, but if there wasn't some um, justice for what he did, there could have been an uprising. People were already upset. So anyway, can't go on vacation. Yeah. How do you feel about that? feel like it was a really bad political move to go on a vacation Mm -hmm. um and and politicians and public figures they're held to a higher stand especially when they're the ones enforcing these laws and enforcing the the lockdowns and then they go and do something like this makes the whole the entirety of the um politicians look really bad yeah so i don't know that's where we're at how do you feel yeah, I, I, like I understand uh, the outrage because you're supposed to lead by example. Yeah. Guy probably wanted to break. I get it. He's probably been a little busy this year, last year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, the, the libertarian in me probably uh, wishes that he, as like a private citizen, um, w- w- would be able to um, make those choices without them becoming like public knowledge. Um, but do I think it was a wise decision given what's going on? No, probably not. So did he resign? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Bring back Bill. <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing, no, there's already somebody new appointed. Oh, okay. But I'm guessing, I'm yeah, there's, because in his press conference, he said, I'm not going to resign at this moment. There's still a lot of work I want to do and I want to be a part of it, blah, 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 blah. But then after the meeting, he resigned. So I'm guessing Doug was like, I either can you or you resign. Yeah. So. That's tough. Yeah. I'm surprised we're not hearing uh, about more figures doing stuff like that. I'm sure there's a lot of them doing it. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of people, even even public people um, locally, I'm sure they're going mm-hmm. out and doing things and blah, blah, blah. But I know it was big news that I think uh, the mayor of Los Angeles, it might be the governor. Um, He's but screwing I, up big. Time. I think it's the mayor of Los Angeles, <laughs> yeah, who's been un- under scrutiny, just like... Um, just like some of the statesmen in, in New York have also been criticized like equally as harshly, but he was 
photographed at like some big opulent fancy dinner with like 15 people yeah. indoor dining at a restaurant yeah. um, and he's also uh, closing restaurants and yeah. you know it's a fine line I would hate to be a politician mm-hmm. right now of any of any size yeah gosh I could it's never tough. do it it's tough anyway let's get to some positivity mm-hmm. what are you looking forward to this year Jared well, you know, you know what? Um, first of all, there's a lot to look forward to, but I, I meant to ask you earlier and I kind of forgot because you mentioned um, your like resolution of no bubbly. Did you actually no, set any? No bubbly. Or Did no, no bubbly crack. Right. You called it a resolution. So that got me thinking. I forgot to write them down. I had a lot of. Did you set any New Year's uh, resolutions? One of them is using my camera more like personally, like taking. Yeah. More, you told me about taking that. Taking more photos and just getting better at photography mm-hmm. because. It started as a passion of mine, and I still want to continue with that passion, but it also helps the business if I get better. Right. And, um, yeah, so that was one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this one. I'd like to. I read in bed last night before before uh, going to bed. Oh, that's cool. So that was good. And just balance. Mm-hmm. Balance is, like, the overall theme, I yeah. think, for the year. Balance I agree. Balancing the amount of exercise with laziness the amount of junk food with food and just finding like that happy medium i agree um that's it cool photos and balance baby yeah no man i completely relate to the balance yeah stuff like yeah just to bring in all those habits and yeah and i really started investing in in 2022 like as far as like the markets and alternative investments and stuff and i'd really like to see that through into this year cool Um, definitely yeah got a couple of things i gotta buy before i get back on track but Mm -hmm. yeah yeah best time to start today bitcoin baby Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah bitcoin at like um i saw it last night it was like 40 something canadian right around 42 grand or something like that i mean what a tumultuous time uh for the markets i know we were talking a couple weeks ago about how as soon as the new year rolls over um there's going to be like a little mini crash or yeah slight dip in the markets and obviously there has been because i think it's like we were saying earlier it's like a really sobering time and you know the santa claus rally is over now um also there's 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 a new chance um it's becoming more likely i've i've been told that um democrats are going to get the house and the senate Mm -hmm. whereas before we thought uh the republicans were at least going to get one of them um and of course, if it's a blue sweep, that means it's likelier that some of Biden's um, more liberal tax plans are going to come into effect, which means higher corporate tax, yep. um, higher tax for high high earning uh, income households, which of course you know does trickle down to smaller like retail investors and stuff like that. So not a fantastic time for the markets, but we're seeing a reflection. And people kind of hedging their bets in alternative investments like Bitcoin, um, like gold, like all of these like collectible products, Pokemon cards, watches, anything, all of these like secondary markets, uh, fine art, for example, are just absolutely record highs. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting to to see this trend of like people aggressively diversifying. into different countries, into different asset classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Because it's, you know, we've had a fantastic year in the stock market. 2020 has been incredible. Um, and now it's just a question of... What's next? Uh, right. Like, is this is this new stimulus bill going to be enough? I know a lot of people are um, just appalled at the fact that it's only $600 this time uh, per citizen. There's still I, a lot of corporate bailout going on, which is fine now, but... Um, if these new tax plans do get put into effect, that might uh, take some of the steam out of that. Yeah. So I think it's just a matter of how long could we maintain this this facade of the real world economy being in such shambles, but the stock market being so like artificially inflated. It's how long can we keep up this big difference? I have this funny meme here, mm-hmm. um, and I'm gonna read it. I wish all. I wish all people struggling for eight months in the middle of a record-breaking pandemic a very six hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of a nuanced meme. You kind of have to know the the yeah. format of that you guys picture. Can't really see it, but um, it's but pretty yeah. funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and then there's this just this one for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on Instagram. 
<laughs> I don't know what what is what his relationship with that is. <laughs> oh man. Um, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Yeah. So we'll see what twenty twenty brings. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that Donald Trump just called on some states person to recount the votes in some state or whatever. Georgia. He, he needs another eleven thousand votes or one vote or whatever to. What a disaster. So Biden gets sworn in in about 16 days. Right. And yeah, we'll see what happens with the Senate and whatnot. Here we go, baby. Mm-hmm. What are your New Year's resolutions, Jared? Um, one of mine is going to be to try to cook a little bit more. Okay. I'm, um, I'm awful. You like to eat out a lot. Yeah. Probably every, every single day. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm a. I'm a bad cook. I've I just got a great veg cookbook for you if you want it. Okay. I just don't cook enough to know where I'm at. Yeah. So I'm. I'm slowly making an effort, yep. and it's been really fun, uh, to get inventive with some of the meals. I do follow a vegan diet, so it makes it. I don't. I don't want to say trickier because there's a lot of great options out there, but you do have to be more creative. Definitely. Shout out to the Superstore. They have uh, one of the best vegan selections in Chatham. I. I think. Yep. Chatham's Whole Foods. Yeah. Exactly. They've got a few not not dedicated aisles, but they've got around four aisles for like specialty diets and stuff like that. Yep. So it's pretty good, but that's a big one for me. Um, is uh, trying to cook more. Also. Um, Depending on how long this uh, work, uh, this lockdown goes, I'm thinking about switching up my workout routine. So I might uh, try to. I've been slowly trying to get into some more like body weight, calisthenics kind of stuff. Easier to do at home, requires less equipment. That might become more necessary uh, if this lockdown becomes longer than than a month. Just something to keep me active, keep me going. Uh, but yeah, the cooking is a big one. Yeah. Um, and also just kind of like keeping up with habits that I built over. Uh, years past and like you said balance is that that's a huge one yeah taking all these good things but figuring out how to prioritize them and yeah not fall off you know for sure cool cool awesome but yeah i might have to take you up on that cookbook that's yeah exciting. it's a jamie oliver veg cookbook oh right yeah you were telling me about that i've one. got two of his cookbooks nice the veg one's pretty good um yeah anyway say we get this year started hop off the podcast Thank you, everybody, for listening, Mm -hmm. and we'll see. Oh, we're going to do 52 episodes minimum this year. Yeah. Welcome back. We're back to every Monday afternoon. Yep. Regular upload schedule. Yep. So thank you all for rocking with us throughout 2020. Yes. And we're looking forward to this year. Peace, love, and positivity.